can you all uh, see the writing pad yes, yes sir, sir. Okay. yes sir so today yes, sir. okay that's that's good so today uh, i am going to start a new topic uh, so today basically uh, i will discuss about some basic image enhancement technique okay so basic image announcement techniques so before uh, we go for uh, some announcement techniques uh, first of all we will define uh, what is an image okay or how an image is defined so uh, before we define an image uh, we need we need to know why we study why we study digital image processing so what is the purpose of uh, studying digital image processing how many you had uh, uh, digital image processing in uh, btech anyone had uh, digital image processing in btech as a core paper or elective paper so can you tell me what is the purpose of studying digital image processing so first uh, sir it is used in camera smartphone camera ha huh? yes it is used in smart like in smart phone camera for processing of image yeah uh, basically uh, we try to improve the pictorial information in an image so uh, in any digital image processing techniques uh, we take a image as an input okay and in the output uh, the uh, processed image uh, is generated okay processed image means somehow the pixel values are manipulated okay or uh, uh, it has been the pixel values are transformed to another uh, another form uh, which is provided in the output image okay that means in the input uh, we take an image in the output uh, we uh, generate another image transform image or improved image so therefore uh, the first reason could be uh, improvement of pictorial information pictorial information for human perception okay so uh, when we take an image in the input uh, for further processing so uh, we need to concentrate on on the uh, improvement of the pictorial information so that uh, we get a better uh, quality image in the output so that is uh, the quality of uh, uh, whether the quality of image is generated by the image processing algorithm or not so that can be decided by the human that means uh, uh, depending upon human perceptions uh, we can tell whether the output image is uh, the quality of the output image is improved or not okay so this is the uh, no this is the fundamental reason why we uh, study digital image processing improvement of pictorial information for human perception 
so what could be the second reason to process the image faster why we need to process the image faster second reason could be uh, for machine vision machine vision applications okay for machine vision applications okay so we we have lots of uh, lots of applications where digital image processing techniques are necessary to improve the performance of the systems or applications okay so we have enormous number of uh, machine vision applications where we successfully uh, applied uh, digital image processing techniques what could be the third reason suppose we are transferring an image uh, through some uh, uh, network okay if the bandwidth of the network is very low then uh, what we need to do so what could be done if the Compression. bandwidth of the network is low however uh, we want to transfer that image through the network then compression yes compression so we will go for the compression of the image okay so the third reason uh, third, third reason could be for storage and transmission for storage and transmission for storage purpose also uh, we could uh, we could have the image storage and transformation or we can say transmission okay transmission so these three are the fundamental reasons for which we study digital image processing okay now we will define an image so what we could say what we could say about an image or how we define an image what is an image collection of pixels collection of pixels yes collection of pixels or we can say collection of numbers this number correspond to the intensity values okay now if i consider an image which has dimension capital m by n okay now any pixels can be represented by two components one is called the x coordinate and y coordinate okay that means x correspond to x correspond to rows and y correspond to columns okay now at any position if that if that pixel is represented by x comma y then we could have a function of x comma y and this function correspond to this function correspond to amplitude and this amplitude is nothing but nothing but the intensity intensity value okay so this function we could have a function of if x comma y and this function correspond to the amplitude and this amplitude is nothing but intensity values okay that means when we uh, this ima image is a two dimensional matrix which contains the intensity values okay which contains the intensity values and an image uh, will have certain number of rows and certain number of columns okay now this in the video or video display unit uh, we could have the origin at the top left corner okay so that means these two so uh, this becomes the y axis and this become the x axis so this is the 
zero comma zero. That means top left corner in the video is the origin of the coordinate. So the coordinate systems that we consider uh, on video contains the origin at the top left corner. That means top left corner will be the origin of the uh, video coordinate system. And if we and uh, an image uh, will have certain number of rows and certain number of columns. That means if, if, if there are m number of rows and n number of columns, okay, then any uh, at any point we could have the intensity values, and that can be represented by f of x comma y. And this function is called the image function. We call this function image function, okay. This, uh, this function is called image function. Now, uh, when we uh, represent when we represent an image uh, on a digital computer, that means uh, on a digital computer, uh, the number of intensity values should, uh, should be finite. Okay, that means infinite number of intensity values cannot be represented on a digital computer. So for the, uh, so here, uh, digital image processing, the in digital image processing, digital means the all the image processing operations will be performed on a digital computer. Okay, that means whatever the pre-processing or whatever the improvement of pictorial information will be uh, done, so that to be done only on the digital computer. That is why all the image processing techniques are called uh, digital image processing techniques. Okay, now digital, whenever we use this uh, term digital with image processing techniques or image processing algorithms, that means that uh, number of uh, intensity values will be finite. Okay, number of amplitude will be finite. So here, f of x comma y is the two dimensional signal. Basically, this is called the image signal. Okay. So here, uh, now the function fxy, as I said that uh, an image will have certain number of rows and certain number of columns. And uh, at any point, we could have a function fxy. And this function fxy correspond to some intensity value. OK. So and uh, in the grayscale image, the intensity range of the intensity values uh, will be from 0 to 255. Now, uh, this uh, function fxy is uh, basically composed of two uh, two components. Uh, one is called ixy, which is multiplied with rxy. Okay. So these two components are made this image function. So image function is composed of i uh, i of x y into r of x y. Now what is i? I is the illumination. So i represent illumination. Okay, and r r represent r represent represent the reflectance. Now what is that? Reflectance. So i i of x comma y represent illumination and r of x comma y represent reflectance. Okay. So since image is a collection of uh, intensity values or gray level values, 
now uh, we need to uh, discuss how an image is formed how an image is formed can you say anyone can say how an image is formed in our eye suppose there is a light source uh, suppose there is a light source okay this is our light source and this is a cylindrical object we could have a cylindrical object okay and this is a flat mirror this is our flat mirror okay now suppose uh, we have a we have a point p we say this is the point p whenever and uh, here we have a, an i okay here we have an i now suppose uh, this uh, from this light source uh, the light source are uh, incident on this object okay and whenever the light source or rays of uh, or rays will be incident on this object this object will emit the uh, rays of light in different directions okay so not in the uniform direction in different direction the rays of light will be emitted okay and some of the lights will be reflect, uh, reflected through this flat you know, flat mirror this is called the flat mirror okay flat mirror now when uh, suppose two rays which is reflected or uh, so this uh, reflected uh, or the rays of light which are emitted from this point strikes on the flat mirror okay at this point okay now it has been reflected and reflected into the eye it has been reflected and reflected into the eye okay now if we consider that means uh, how it will be look like so it will be look like that uh, the rays is coming from the back of the flat uh, back of the image okay here we could have another similar so it will be look like that Mm, the, so here eyes will see that the light source is coming from the back of the mirror flat mirror okay but this is not the actual case so actually here when the from the light source the light uh, the rays of uh, or the rays of lights are incident on this object this is the cylindrical object if we consider the object is a cylindrical object then uh, on this object the light source are uh, incident and then uh, some of uh, some of the uh, rays uh, will be emitted in different directions okay not in the uniform direction in different directions and uh, if we consider that uh, such uh, one such one such ray is uh, emitted from this point and reflected by this flat mirror and uh, uh, flat mirror and uh, reflected into our eyes then the eye will see that the light source is coming from the back of the flat mirror but this is not the case okay so if we consider this uh, uh, point as p dash this is p and this is p dash okay and this is called the virtual image this is called the actual image actual image this is called virtual image okay now if we consider another point over here if we consider another point 
okay so suppose the point this is our point or we we could say that uh, the point, from this point another ray is emitted and strike on the flat mirror at this position okay this is called b and this is called a okay and uh, reflected into the into our eye okay so what we will see we will we will think that the light source is coming from the back of the image okay back of the image that means if we uh, so in the uh, if we consider there is a uh, similar object uh, which is present in the back of the flat mirror uh, then uh, our eyes will see or our, our eyes will think that the light source is coming from this back of the object but this is actually this is not the actual case so in the, if we consider this is the point q from where the uh, light so the ray is emitted then uh, reflected by this flat mirror and reached to our eyes then we will consider this point is q dash okay this is so distance between uh, p and q and distance between p dash and q dash both will be so both will be same okay so this this distance so p to q and uh, p to q equals to we can write p dash q dash okay so this is the this is the way by which an image is formed in our eyes okay so there will be a light source so from this light source rays of light will incident on the object if we uh, and if we if we will say, if we will see an object uh, that means the light source from that light source the rays of light will be incident on the object and from that object uh, uh, rays of light will be emitted uh, some of the uh, rays of light will be emitted okay in different directions and uh, and uh, some such uh, rays uh, will be reflected by the uh, mirror like uh, mirror like substance or uh, it is a mirror and which is uh, which is reached to our eyes and uh, we think that the rays are coming from the back of the uh, flat mirror or back of the uh, mirror like substance so um, uh, this is the way by which an image is formed in our eyes so uh, when we will study uh, the biological structure of our eyes we will see that there are different uh, uh, different uh, biological uh, components are exist in our eyes through which the uh, through which the image is formed in our eyes but basically uh, uh, when we see an object that means uh, there will be some light source which is uh, coming from uh, which is coming from that uh, object and uh, uh, that is reflected by some mirror like in substance okay so in this case uh, in this case the illumination will be called the eye of x comma y so here i of x comma y so this part will be called the illumination okay and r of x comma y so here we can write that i of x comma y is the illumination and r of x comma y is the reflect reflectance okay so that means there are two components in the in the function of x comma fxy so in this so in this function fxy basically this function is consist of two components or uh, uh, two image components i of x comma y so here the range of uh, what is the range of i of x comma y can you tell me what is the range of i of x comma y so number of rays may be 0 to infinite okay number of rays may be 0 to infinite and uh, for reflectance reflectance may be fine reflectance is finite so 0 to we could have 0 to some finite 
number that means the finite number of rays reflected into our eyes by some mirror like substance okay so here the range of reflectance r of x comma y will be finite but the range of illumination that is i of x comma y will be infinite so zero to infinite number of uh, uh, rays from the light source uh, uh, will be incident on the object okay any questions from here Now, if we consider uh, the same image of M by N, okay, that means uh, here here, and if we if we consider any point x comma y, okay, then zero less than equals to x less than equals to capital m okay zero less than equals to y less than equals to n that means x x coordinate uh, this x uh, coordinate value and y coordinate value will be lie between zero and m and zero and n respectively okay but uh, since the illumination uh, uh, illumination has range uh, from zero to infinite so therefore the function of x comma y image function becomes the uh, so we'll have range from zero to infinite zero to infinite but with finite number of intensities value can we represent this image or image function on digital computer is it possible because f x y equals to i of x comma y into r of x comma y so this is the multiplication of two components illumination and reflectance reflectance has a finite range but illumination has infinite range so therefore the, the image function or the function f x y will have infinite range zero to infinite so the infinite number of infinite number of intensity values or gray level values cannot be represented on a digital computer therefore we need to uh, so uh, we need some way out okay so how to represent how to how to make the fi infinite range uh, to finite range so that we can represent the finite range of uh, intensity values or gray level values on a digital computer how it is done or how it is possible anyone can suggest anyone can tell me how it is done so uh, to uh, do this we will use two term one is called sampling okay another is called quantization quanta what is sampling what is sampling what is quantization so sampling is sampling is basically discretization discretization of coordinate coordinate values discretization of coordinates well. what is quantization discretization of discretization of intensity values 
intensity values now how the sampling means the discretization of coordinates value if we if, if we consider theory of uh, real numbers then theory of real number says theory of real number says that between any two points we could have infinite number of points okay between any two points we could have infinite number of points and with this with this uh, infinite number of points uh, we cannot represent an image on a digital computer so digital so that means if we have infinite number of intensity values that means uh, the uh, we, uh, we need the large uh, so we need the mem large memory space Thus, that is not possible with a digital computer okay that means that much of or we know we don't know actually we don't know how many uh, intensity values will be there in uh, in this range of uh, image function uh, fxy uh, therefore uh, this is not possible this is not feasible in uh, on digital computer to represent an image so therefore we need we need to employ the sampling process and quantization process so sampling process is nothing but the discretization of coordinates values okay and quantization is discretization of intensity values now how sampling is done now if we consider there is a signal one dimensional signal xt okay this is a one dimensional signal xt okay and here x axis is represented by time and y axis is represented by the function of time xt here xt is the function of some signal one dimensional continuous signal this is the one dimensional continuous signals now we could uh, we could consider uh, we could consider any number of points at any position on the uh, on on this uh, curve okay uh, for uh, this function xt okay now uh, if we uh, discretize this uh, curve or this function uh, at uh, some regular interval okay that means uh, if we if we take if we take the values at regular intervals on this curve then this interval say suppose we call this interval we call this interval d delta t okay this is delta t this is 2 delta t this is also delta t okay that means at this point uh, so this is 0 comma 0 this is 0 comma 0 okay that means we could write uh, so what will be the frequency uh, if the frequency is represented by f then 1 upon delta t becomes the frequency okay so at some discrete position uh, we will take uh, we will consider the values and by this way we could have the discretized uh, discretized uh, discretized signals of xt okay so xt xt is the function which represent the one dimensional continuous signal then the, if we want to have the discretized function of this continuous function xt or of this uh, of the given signal xt then uh, we should uh, divide the uh, we should divide the uh, signal at some uh, discrete position and and uh, at, at those discrete positions uh, we will uh, consider uh, the values and that values will be uh, represent on a digital computer similarly we could have the two dimensional uh, two dimensional function fxy so fxy is nothing but a two dimensional signal image signal okay so in place of t we could write the x coordinate and y coordinate okay? okay and this x coordinate and y coordinate will constitute a point and uh, that point uh, will represent or uh, will give some values okay and these values is nothing but the intensity values color values or gray level values so that means uh, we here we are uh, here we have written f equal f equal to 1 by del t okay now if we further divide this further divide this signal 
that means now we could have a we could write a equals to 2 del t 2 del t so a equal to 2 del t means that means the if we increase if we increase the uh, increase the frequency then the length of the interval will be decreased okay length of the interval will be decreased that means uh, uh, previously it was uh, delta t now it becomes 1 by uh, so previously it was a a equals to 1 by del t now it becomes a equals to 1 by 2 del t okay that means we are increasing the number of uh, intervals but the interval uh, interval length will be uh, length will be decreased and when the interval length will be de decreased the frequency will be increased okay so in this case uh, we could have the discretized signals of uh, the function xt okay Any questions from here? Anything you want to make clear? So we have discussed uh, why we study uh, digital image processing. Then uh, we have defined the uh, image. Then we have uh, discussed about the image formation, how image is uh, formed in our eyes. If you have any questions from this part, you can ask me. Otherwise, I will uh, go for the uh, next topic. So now uh, we can uh, represent. That means uh, uh, that means after discretization of uh, discretization of coordinate values. Now now we have uh, discretized the coordinate values. Okay, into finite number of grids. Finite number of grids. So after uh, dividing the two-dimensional signals into finite number of uh, signals okay or finite number of uh, intensity values then that means for each grid that means in this grid we could have a number of uh, intensity values okay we could have number of intensity values so in each grid we could have a number of intensity values now which intensity values randomly we will consider any point in the grid okay so within a grid we will consider any point and that becomes the point of the pixel of that grid and that grid basically that grid is nothing but a any pixel point so any pixel point x comma y okay so if we uh, if we consider randomly a grid and this grid is represented by x comma y okay and the function of x comma y will represent the intensity value intensity value of this location x comma y okay that means by discretization of coordinate values uh, we can have uh, the uh, we can have the finite number of uh, finite number of coordinate points and uh, by discretization of intensity values we could have the finite number of intensity values or gray level values okay now if we represent an image how an image uh, will be represented then now we could write if we have m number of rows and n number of columns okay then uh, we could write f of 0 comma 0 f of 0 comma 1 up to f of 
0, comma, n. Because n number of columns, n number of columns, okay, and we have m number of rows, So here we have m f of m comma zero, f of m comma one, and up to f of m comma n. Okay. So that means that we have finite number of amplitudes in this two-dimensional matrix m by n, m by n, and this two-dimensional matrix will represent an image. That means this two dimensional matrix will correspond to an image now we have finite number of intensity values any questions okay Now, if we uh, consider a small part uh, of an image, suppose here we have uh, 220, 200, 210. There, uh, here we consider 3 by 3. 3 by 3 small uh, sub matrix in the image. Okay. So if we consider three by three sub matrix in the image, then uh, this image, so that means uh, in this image, if we consider this is the part, this three by three sub matrix is the part of this image, uh, okay. Then this uh, sub matrix will represent some part, some part uh, of the objects in the image. If the, if this, if the image, if this image is having a number of objects, uh, number of objects uh, which are uh, present in the image, then some of then uh, then a part of that uh, part of, part of some object uh, uh, will uh, represent uh, by this small matrix. Okay, three by three small matrix. So this small matrix is basically extracted from this big uh, matrix. Okay, so this. This uh, original matrix represents the image, and when we extract some part from that uh, image, then we could have, or uh, we might have uh, a matrix, a small matrix, three by three. It may be three by three. It may be five by five. It may be seven by seven, nine by nine, and so on. Okay, and uh, that small matrix will represent a part of object in the image. Okay. So this is in this matrix, in this small matrix three by three, we can uh, we could see that uh, there are nine pixels and most of the pixels are bright pixels. That means they are very close to 255. Okay, that means this part is uh, this part represent the uh, br uh, bright the, uh, uh, bright part of the object. Okay, or bright region of the object. So all the pixel values which are uh, which are present in this three by three uh, small matrix uh, are uh, found to be very close to 255. Therefore, this small matrix uh, will represent uh, a, a bright uh, region in the image or uh, bright region of some object in the image. Now we will talk about basic uh, 
इमेज ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन टेक्निक्स ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन टेक्निक्स ओके बेसिक इमेज ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन टेक्निक्स सो as i uh, as i told you that uh, we are going to uh, discuss about some image enhancement techniques so image enhancement techniques are nothing but the pre processing techniques so image enhancement can be done in two different domain two different domain so one is called the special domain special domain okay and image image enhancement can also be uh, performed in frequency domain frequency domain in the last class i was uh, talking about uh, talking about the signal in signal in mathematics is represented by a function xt where t is the time okay so signal may be uh, we this signal may be a function x of time x of uh, we could say image function okay x or uh, image signals x of we can voltage x of electromagnetic electromagnetic wave this electromagnetic wave is basically used for transmission of fm signals okay in fm radio this electromagnetic signal or electromagnetic wave is used so similarly we could have the function or uh, function uh, x of frequency okay so is in the special domain special domain basically uh, manipulates the uh, manipulates the pixels directly okay but in frequency domain and uh, special in special domain image is represented uh, image is represented in in, in uh, plane itself image plane itself okay and uh, in special domain all the pixels are uh, manipulated directly that means there is no transformation so we don't need to transform the pixel values into another form okay or another uh, into another matrix then uh, uh, we perform the image processing uh, techniques or image enhancement techniques but in case of frequency domain in case of frequency domain we obtain uh, first we obtain the uh, fourier transform okay first we obtain the fourier transform of the given image then we apply the image enhancement techniques fourier transform of the given image fxy okay then we apply the image enhancement techniques image enhancement techniques on the generated fourier transform so this is the basic difference with and in special domain we consider the uh, pixel values as a signal but in frequency domain we consider the frequency frequency of the signal as the input okay and we obtain the fourier transform from the given image fxy and then uh, we uh, we can apply the image enhancement techniques so this is the basic difference between uh, special domain and frequency domain so image enhancement can be performed in two different domains special domain and frequency domain and uh, in special domain uh, when we talk about the basic uh, image transformation so basic image transformation we could have a function gxy and this gxy we could write gxy equals to t of fxy 
now what is t here so by image enhancement what we want to achieve by image enhancement uh, we want to we want to improve the pixel quality of the input image okay we want to improve the pixel quality of the improved image that means uh, if we consider so in image enhancement we could consider either the low pass filter or the high pass filter so in the last class i have uh, talked about uh, uh, the low pass filter that is gaussian smoothing uh, filter and what does what that filter does so that filter smooth that filter uh, makes the image uh, smooth okay that means the the discontinuities uh, discontinuities which is uh, which are appear as uh, as uh, sharpening signals can be attenuated okay that means the high frequency high frequency signals are attenuated and low frequency signals are passed by the low pass filter but uh, but in case of the high pass filter so high pass filter basically uh, attenuates the low frequency signals and pass the high frequency signal that means uh, the there are some uh, we could consider we could consider uh, some filters like uh, mean filter okay mean filter then we could have median filter median filter we could have max filter okay so these are we could have adaptive filter so these filters are basically low pass filter these filters are basically low pass filters okay so whatever the image enhancement techniques uh, uh, i will discuss uh, in the uh, next class so either uh, the image enhancement techniques uh, belong to low pass filter or high pass filter or some image enhancement techniques may be uh, maybe uh, from basic transformation techniques so where we consider this expression gxy equals to t of uh, fxy and this t represent the transformation operator this is called transformation operator now how this transformation operator works transformation operator okay this transformation operator is applied on the given input image fxy so after applying this transformation operator we obtain gxy in the output okay that means this gxy will be the improved image improved image in terms of human perception that means humans will decide whether the quality of the output image is uh, suitable for some application or not that means here the here the matter here the image enhancement is subjective okay so whatever the image enhancement techniques uh, we will apply so that image enhancement techniques will be subjective not objective so subjective means the human perception will decide about the quality of the image for the required application okay for the intended application only the human will decide or human perception will decide about the quality of the image that means uh, one image is generated okay in the output and uh, uh, and uh, i can uh, i can have a different view on the image that means i can say that the quality of the image is not up to the mark but someone may someone may say that the image quality is good for some other, some application that means uh, the quality of the image which is uh, uh, which is uh, which is appeared in the output image uh, may be applicable uh, in uh, different uh, may be applicable in different domain so uh, depending upon the application or depending upon the requirement of the application the image quality may vary okay so that means the human perception human perception will decide whether the quality of the image is good for the application or not okay if this is not if, uh, if someone will uh, someone will say that the quality of the image is not good for the application then uh, in other way we can in other way we can improve the quality of the image okay now how this transformation operator works suppose in we consider an image and in this image we are consider 
थ्री बाय थ्री थ्री बाय थ्री नेबरहुड ओके एंड इन दिस नेबर द सेंटर पिक्सेल इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय एक्स कॉमा वाई ओके इस सेंटर पिक्सेल इस सेंटर पिक्सेल दैट मींस दिस पिक्सेल इज एनी पिक्सेल इन द इमेज इफ वी कंसीडर एम बाय एन इमेज देन इन एम बाय एम इमेज एक्स कॉमा वाई वो एक्स कॉमा वाई कूड बी एनी पॉइंट इन द इमेज ओके एंड अराउंड अराउंड दिस पॉइंट अराउंड दैट रैंडम पॉइंट वी कूड हैव ए वी कूड हैव ए नेबरहुड ओके एंड द dimension of the neighborhood is 3 by 3 we could have different dimension we could have 5 by 5 we could have 7 by 7 okay we could have 9 by 9 now uh, this transformation operator will work on the um, work on this input pixel x comma y okay that means the transformation operator uh, the the dimension of the transformation operator is 3 by 3 That is why this three by three neighborhood is defined around the point x comma y. Okay, that means now we are going to transform this or manipulate this intensity value or variable value at x comma y. Okay, with the with the with the given transformation operator. That means in the in the transformation operator. so there are uh, there are two different types of transformation operator so in the one transformation in one type of transformation operator we could have the elements which are already found in the transformation operator that means uh, we could have the coefficient values which are already available in the transformation operator of uh, of uh, of neighborhood size 3 by 3 5 by 5 and 7 by 7 and so on and or other type of uh, transformation operator we could define the coefficient values okay we could define the coefficient values if we consider one by one neighborhood that means a single point this single point is uh, one by one uh, neighborhood represent this single point and for this single point if we consider a function s equals to r of t okay r of t now this r of t so t is the input signal r so here or we can say here s is the output okay s is the output so s of t will represent uh, the so here t is the input signal and uh, r is the so here r is the operator so when we apply this uh, or we can say this is s of t of r okay s of t of r okay so here t of r so r is the input signal and s is the output signal and if if we if if we say that uh, the neighborhood is 1 uh, by 1 then this is called the point processing so that every point we can apply this transformation operator t uh, on r and uh, we obtain s in the output that means after point processing we will have the transform point in the output okay and this transform point uh, uh, transform point will replace the original pixel value in the image okay so by defining the neighborhood uh, neighborhood uh, around any pixel in the image we could have the transform value uh, for that uh, for that point uh, around which uh, we define a neighborhood and uh, in the in output image uh, output image these transform values are reflected and by this transform values we could have the different appearance in the uh, different appearance of the output image uh, uh, for the given input image and uh, that appearance will decide uh, that appearance of the image will decide the quality of the image that means so all will be decided by the human perception so human perception is the uh, final uh, indicator that will decide whether um, whether the output image is suitable for some application or not okay any questions so 
so today uh, uh, at this point we are going to stop this uh, session so in the next class uh, we will talk about uh, basic transformation excuse me sir uh, yes sir we want a doubt clearing class uh, where we want to solve the numericals you have given in the examination okay so in the uh, last examination uh, the continuous assessment that i have taken so all of you uh, were familiar with uh, the problems i mean the problems which are uh, which are already given in the study materials that i have sent to you all yes sir okay then uh, then uh, if you have if you have any problem from there you can ask me okay so at the end of the class you can ask me if you have any problem from uh, those part which i have already covered so you can ask me at the end of the class so that we can discuss together that problem okay okay sir so from the next class uh, we will start so can you discuss uh, all the question given the examination and if you have if you need any Hello? separate if you need any separate session for doubt clearing uh, class then uh, we could also we could also have that session yes yes sir sir can you discuss the questions in the test that has came yes yes uh, why not why not uh, we should discuss together okay so you fix a session yes, you fix a day for that okay so that uh, we could discuss okay sir okay. because uh, because from the next week i think uh, the ug classes will be stopped because ug exams will start from 26 december okay and your classes uh, will be continued so uh, exam date for uh, mtech is not decided okay so therefore i think your classes will be continued uh, so we, from the next week we, we could have a separate session for that so apart from wednesday and friday or saturday class we could have another uh, session doubt clearing session on monday is that okay for you okay sir okay sir so as so at what time we could have that uh, doubt clearing session on monday we will discuss and then tell you 11 o'clock sir let yes. us um, no let, let us uh, talk about i means within ourselves then we will uh, let you know sir ha uh, better to uh, better to uh, better to discuss uh, this matter so that uh, we could have uh, a doubt clearing class on uh, any day from monday to saturday okay okay sir okay. the schedule classes okay. the time of the schedule classes will not be changed okay okay sir. wednesday and saturday morning okay so these two are the schedule classes so except the schedule classes you can decide uh, on any day uh, for uh, for that session okay okay sir okay sir. Okay. Okay. okay that's all for today thank you sir